Hey everybody, Kyle Sasser here, Great Homes Tampa Bay. They were hitting those end of year numbers, that's right. Real estate market statistics for Pinellas County for November 2019. So you're probably asking, Kyle, it's December, why am I getting November 2019 statistics? And the answer is, it takes the local real estate board about a month just to compile all of the data and get it over to me in this beautiful format. If you'd like your own copy of these uh, reports, just to maybe follow along with, or maybe just like very colorful um, <laughs> market stats reports, there's a link down below. You can click on that. I think I just need a first name, last name, and an email address, and I'll be happy to drop these into your mailbox every month. We are looking at November 2019 numbers, and we are comparing these numbers to November 2018. The reason we do that is because during the course of a year, the real estate cycle has a natural ebb and flow. Some months are a little higher than others. So comparing month to month, say like October versus November, is of limited utility. <laughs> so by comparing November 2019 to November 2018, we can actually see what the long-term real estate trends are and maybe pick out some, uh, some market shifts and stuff like that. There is some data in here that concerns me. And I would ask that you watch this video until the end. Maybe hit that subscribe button because it's going to take a few months for this to play out. I'll go over that in more detail as we get there. But overall, prices are still up. Inventory is still tight, <laughs> which has been the trend for the last few years. We did have a little bit of a slowdown earlier in the year where more houses were coming on the markets. And prices kind of stalled out a little bit, but that time has passed and we're back to the, uh, you know, increasing prices and fewer houses available to purchase. So to actually dive into the numbers, total number of closed sales is up 2.3% to just over up to uh, 1,008. And remember, this is just single family homes. This does not cover uh, condos or mobile homes or any anything like that. Next up, we have median sales price. So if you remember in math class, you have median, mean, mode, average. So median is the midpoint of the market. So that's where half of the homes sold for more and half of the homes sold for less. So for November 2019, median sales price was $274,250, which was an increase of 4.9%. Average sales price increased 1% to $335,687. Like one, two, three percent, I don't get too excited about because, you know, that could just kind of be a normal uh, ebb and flow. Uh, if the trend continues like plus four months, then obviously it's a positive trend. But on a single report, I don't generally get too excited about that. Now, once you get up in like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, those are definitely <laughs> bigger, bigger numbers to be looking at. So median time to contract, which is how long a home stays on the market before someone has an offer accepted on the home, decreased 11% percent to 23 days, which is a pretty significant shortening of time to contract. So prices have been going up, time on the market has shrunk, and the reason why is because inventory is tightening up. So if we look at the number of new listings, we can see that the number of new homes coming on the market for sale dropped 12.4% to 1,128 homes. The number of total active inventory actually decreased 19.8%. So that's almost 20% fewer homes for sale in November 2019 versus November 2018. And that number is at 2,748, which is down from 3,427. So that is 679 fewer homes in one month for sale. That is a huge drop, which explains a lot of what the market is doing price-wise. The last thing I like to look at is the month supply of inventory, which is kind of a arbitrary metric that realtors use just to gauge the amount of supply versus the amount of demand. The thought process behind month supply of inventory is if there was no new homes brought to market for sale, how long would it take to sell through the current inventory at the current sales rate? Kind of a complicated process to explain. That number is down. 16.7% from three months to two and a half months. All that to say, fewer homes for sale and continuing or increasing demand, which is continuing to drive home prices up. Now, this does vary a bit depending on price points. So let's dive into the price point numbers and see where things actually are depending upon what price of the market your home that you're looking at or thinking about selling is going to fall in. 
<laughs> and if you've been hearing my dogs growling down here, just know that they're very excited about these real estate numbers. That's why they're they're rolling around and <laughs> playing and growling at, at one another. So the median time to contract, uh, as I said, that's how long it takes for something that's newly on the market to go under contract. This typically holds relatively steady. I don't go over this stat too much just because it's of limited utility, but I did want to point it out in a few price points. So from $100,000 to $150,000, that decreased 35% to 19 days. So the average home between $100,000 and $150,000 is only on the market for 19 days. And that story pretty much holds through all the way up to uh, $300,000. So you really, once the house hits the market on average, two weeks is all it's on the market before it, it goes under contract. And remember, this is average, so there's gonna be a few where it's literally two to three days on the market and then it's sold. And the stuff that hangs around more than that, likely it's probably outdated or maybe it's cited, you know, like it's on a busy street or something like that. The other things that had drastic reductions was four hundred to six hundred thousand dollars, which dropped thirty three percent down to twenty two days. So anything between fifty and six hundred thousand dollars has about twenty days on the market before it goes under contract. That is <laughs> that is quick. So you might be asking, hey, what's the reason why? And if we look at the new listings by list price, we can see that there's just not a lot of stuff coming on the market in these price points. So fifty to one hundred thousand there were 45% fewer new listings. There was only 22 houses in that price point that came on the market in November 2019 in Pinellas County. 100 to $150,000, there was 35% fewer. It was a total of 69. 150 to 200,000, there was 11% fewer. 200 to $250,000, there was 20% fewer. So that zero to $250,000 mark, just there is not a lot of stuff coming on the market for sale. And what does that do? That leads to in increased prices. <laughs> and then you have total inventory. So total inventory is going to be all the new stuff, but it's also going to be the stuff that's been hanging around for a while, maybe not quite as desirable um, as all the new stuff. Total inventory is down across the board. There is not one price category that has more listings in November 2019 compared to November 2018. Now, the difference varies, of course, uh, but generally speaking, 10 to 25 uh, percent. The big, highest one I see is 150 to 200 thousand, which was a 30 percent reduction. 200 to 250 thousand dollars was a 27 percent reduction. Once you get up into like the four, four like 400 to 600 thousand dollars was only down 11.9 percent. So 600 to a million, and then all the way up to you know three, four, five million. There's actually 15 percent fewer this year than there were last year. So just across the board, fewer and fewer stuff for sale, which again, with steady or increasing demand, you're gonna hit higher prices. The last page here is the one I, the one I call the doom and gloom page. This is the one that covers short sales, foreclosures, and bank owned properties. I use this kind of as a barometer for the overall health of the economy, as well as the market in general. And the trend's been st steady decline all the way down to single digits, to be honest. The last video I did, I did point out that there was an increase on short sales and foreclosures, and the numbers are so low that it's not something to be immediately worried about, but I did say that I was going to keep an eye on it and see if it seemed to be a trend. This month, that trend continues and has actually accelerated a little bit, but a lot of that is probably just because the numbers are so low. So, you know, like if you go from one to six, that's a 600% increase, which sounds crazy, but, but compared to 1,000 home sales isn't a very large percentage of the total sales. It is something to be interested in and keep an eye on just because you, know, you don't want to see this number get too high. So total number of foreclosures in November 2019 versus 2018, there was a total of 28, which was an increase of 33.3%. A very nice even number. <laughs> and then short sales. So this is, this is the scary one that I'm probably going to get a lot of uh, traction on at social media. Short sales increased 200% from 4 to, to 12. <laughs> so 12 short sales, not something to get tremendously excited, but just remember, this does continue the trend from months previous. So something that we do want to keep an eye on and we want to monitor and see if this accelerates or holds relatively steady. 
So that's the real estate market statistics for November 2019. And what do you think? Leave me a comment down below. If you think we are about to hit a economic uh, depression, if you think it's about to be a real estate bloodbath out there, I'd love to hear your comments, what you think the market's going to do down below. If you've been priced out of the market or something like that, I'd like to hear from you as well. If you would like your own copy of these beautiful statistics, like I said, hit that link down below, sign up. I will send you the links to this video as well as those exact statistics every single month. And also be sure to hit that subscribe button because in addition to market stats, I do a lot of great videos on local neighborhoods, local homes, just cool history stuff, and also some of the finer details of the home buying and selling process. So if you would like help finding your own great place in Tampa Bay, I'd be ha happy to help you out. You can uh, send me an email, kyle at sassergroup.com. Uh, you can also just leave a comment down below and I'll, I'll connect with you some way. <laughs> uh, other than that, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you soon.